Uh, I want to uh, take a few minutes here to speak about something that uh, people frequently ask about uh, in uh, relation to the field of private investigation. It's uh, the area of surveillance. What is it? Uh, what types of surveillance uh, are there? Uh, how does one conduct surveillance? How does one prepare for surveillance? What is the whole nature uh, of uh, surveillance? And the first thing that I want you to understand is that surveillance, while, uh, while the areas that we'll discuss sound fairly straightforward, uh, is an area of uh, private investigation that requires uh, a great deal of focus and a great deal of, of uh, orientation and training and, and education to be able to do well. What I mean by that is that we can talk about surveillance and we might talk about surveillance over the course of, in this case, a few minutes in our classes, uh, in, in, the, in the course of a few days. But surveillance really does take a lifetime. Surveillance skills can take a lifetime to develop effectively. Quite simply, surveillance, which comes from the French verb surveiller, to watch over, is a, is, a, is a system or a method through which private investigators acquire information based on where a subject goes, what the subject does, who the subject meets, and of course the condition there is, while the subject has no idea that anybody is really paying attention to them. In our classes when we discuss surveillance, one of the important things that we discuss is the importance of blending into your environment. You know, you might see images of private investigators conveyed through the media, movies, posters, things that sort of excite the senses in terms of thinking about private investigation, but, but in reality a private investigator should be as nondescript as he or she can possibly be. The idea of conducting live surveillance is to blend into your environment so that nobody thinks twice about who you are and what you're doing and why you happen to be there. Uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the, the best surveillance is the, uh, the best investigator is the individual who nobody would ever imagine or assume to be a private investigator. Uh, there are different types of surveillance and I want to introduce you briefly uh, to what some of those uh, different types of surveillance are. Uh, Mobile surveillance uh, describes the type of surveillance where a private investigator follows a subject by car from one location to another. It's important to understand that in our part of the world, in Canada and southern Ontario and many other developed areas of North America and, 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 and the world, the primary form of transportation for most people is a personal automobile. And the key to effective surveillance is you should always be prepared to travel using the same mode of transportation as the subject uh, of, your, uh, of your action, of your surveillance. If a subject is driving, you uh, need to be in a position to drive behind him. If a subject is walking, you need to be able to get out of your car. And if a subject is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, taking public transportation, then you need to be equipped to be able to get onto uh, the public transportation network. So in connection to mobile surveillance, following the subject by car, uh, a uh, car uh, is uh, something that provides both a benefit and some challenges and obstacles to a surveillance. Benefits in that uh, if you properly prepare, you can have with you everything that you potentially might require for an effective surveillance uh, and for a long-term surveillance. Uh, the idea is to pack uh, the right things in the right way to have them accessible for you while you're out in the, uh, in the field. Um, a, uh, a difficulty in connection to, to mobile surveillance is, of course, the fact that you're dealing with a lot of of, of distractions uh, around you, uh, other traffic uh, on the road, uh, traffic control such as stoplights and uh, uh, and uh, and traffic congestion and uh, and so on, and sometimes it's a little bit daunting, a little bit overwhelming for a private investigator to sort of get the hang of what it is that he or she should do and how to do it well in order to ensure continuity in the action because that's the that's the key to surveillance. I don't want to know what the subject is doing now for the next five minutes, I want to know what the subject is doing for the next, you know, several hours or a day or an entire 
period of time, whatever that period of time happens to be. So you need to be able to, to gear yourself to, to conducting effective mobile surveillance, and it's more than just getting into your car and following the subject. There's an awful lot that you have to contend with, starting with psychological preparations and physical preparation, and then, of course, the experience that you'll gain simply by going out and doing uh, surveillance. Uh, foot surveillance, a subject who is walking from one location to uh, another, that's foot surveillance. A private investigator is following that individual on foot. And the idea here in conducting foot surveillance is uh, that you are uh, going to places the subject goes to, in essence, doing this, the types of things the subject is doing. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, in your case, uh, you, you, you sort of are, 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 are not aware before it happens of what's going to happen. So so the key to an effective foot surveillance is to sort of be as prepared as you possibly can, have with you as many things as you could uh, potentially uh, require uh, in order to blend into any sort of environment. It starts with the way that you dress, making sure that you have enough details about the subject to know whether you should be starting your surveillance action in casual clothing, jeans and a sweatshirt, or whether you should be uh, dressed in business style clothing, and what's going to allow you to best fit into the different environments that the subject might go to. And one of the keys to figuring that one out is the more you know about your subject before surveillance begins, the better prepared you can be to anticipate where he or she might go and what they might do during the course of the action that you're concerned about. There are other aspects to surveillance, of course. We're not going to talk about them now. Team surveillance uh, is an example, uh, and, and um, uh, stakeout surveillance and, and so on. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, a lot of people con confuse the issue of surveillance that we're talking about now, which is a live uh, action intended to determine where a subject goes and what a subject does, uh, with static surveillance, which is what you would get uh, by positioning a video camera on the corner of a building and watching the details of what occurs in that building. The difference between the two is the video camera cannot jump down off its mount in order to follow the subject as he leaves and goes from one location to another, whereas the whole intent for the private investigator is uh, for him or for her to be able to do exactly that, which is to follow a subject as he or she proceeds from one uh, place to another, from one event to another, from one set of circumstances to another. The key, uh, the objective of surveillance is to report on a continuous basis on the subject's actions and activities.